I want to say good morning to all, obviously all of you who are here and those who are watching online. So this morning, we are inviting you into a time of listening to God so that we might better listen with caring hearts to others. In John 10, Jesus talks about himself as the great, sh great shepherd, and he says this, I am the good shepherd. I know my own sheep, and they know me. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one can snatch them away from me, for my Father has given them to me, and he is more powerful than anyone else. No one can snatch, snatch them from the Father's hand. So we have the promise that God will always be with us, and no one can take us out of his hand. And what a privilege that is, that God is with us through all of life. Let us remember and praise him forever for that gift.
Lord Jesus, we thank you for the gift of being with us. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your consistency of always being here for us. We thank you always for who you are. I ask all this in your name. Amen. You may be seated for a moment. Well, it's good to be together. I hope you're all going to be able to enjoy this day. Um, because we know summer, as we know it, is quickly going to change into a, a cooler fall, so hopefully you're um, prepared for that. But we are thankful we can be here together today to worship. And this morning, as we come, um, we're excited because in about a week, um, less than a week, uh, there's going to be 12 uh, people from our congregation who are going to gather together for a time of prayer, discernment, leadership development. And really, uh, this ministry discernment retreat is really um, an important time as we seek our Lord and what he has to say. And one of the people that I really appreciate is Cindy Helene, who really has spent a great deal of time um, over the past few re years really learning to just listen to God. Just taking those times to just say, Lord, I want to hear from you. I want to draw close to you. I want to be in communion with you. And so I'm thankful. And uh, so I'm going to ask her to come and share a little bit about what God's been placing upon her heart. And, uh, and what God's been showing here. So let's give her a hand as we... So I 
thanked God, and because I'm too self-conscious to shout, I whispered, again, again. Now you're probably thinking it was a bone meal, and possibly you're right, but while I was grateful, and while I was enjoying God, while I was enjoying Him in this moment for what He had done, the surprise He had given me, He used that moment to tell me this. He said, this plant is like New Day. It is faithful, resilient, strong, and vibrant. And I can use it. Do not dig it up. Did you hear that today? God is speaking to us. And he's speaking about us. Doesn't that just, yeah. it does. Amen. I'm just shaking you. <laughs> and I want you to listen again because this is what God says to us about us. You are faithful. You are resilient. You are strong. And you are vibrant. And this is the best part. I can use you. So keep your roots firmly planted. So God did do it again. We enjoyed several more blooms, and there's still more coming. My prayer is that it's firmly planted, continuing to be faithful, depending on Him for strength and resilience. We are vibrant, and God will use us. I'm excited to see you. Cindy would share this this morning because as a worship planning team, we had been talking about uh, bringing a new song into our community. And I texted Derek one morning when I was on the way to work, uh, when I was singing the song that we're going to sing this morning in my car. And I said, I really think this needs to be the next song of New Day. Uh, and this song is called Prophesy Your Promise. And what, Lindy, or what Cindy just did right now is she prophesied over our church. It's we're speaking into existence what God says is true. What already is in his eyes. What he sees for us, but we don't know it. And so God gives gifts to people in his church to prophesy the future of what will be. That's in alignment with who he is. And so this song that we're going to sing... If you know it, you can just join and sing, but we want to make this song, especially in the season that we're in right now, we want to make this song a song of uh, really declaration of faith for our church, that when we only see in part, we will prophesy his promise. I believe you, God. Even when I can't see it, I believe you, God, because you finish what you start. So I'll trust you in the process. This is what we're going to learn. Uh, you can join as you feel comfortable.
stand on your promises and we receive God this word that you've given to our sister and our friend Cindy and so God when we can only see in part we still say your words are true and when fear and shame want to get in the way they can go to hell <laughs> because God we claim the promises of heaven we want your kingdom here on earth. We know who we are. And when we forget who we are and whose we are, we come together as a New Day community to remind each other that we are yours, that we belong to you. God, be hovering over this whole morning. We assert your lordship, your dominion over this time, God, because you are holy in this place. You reign. This is your place to have your way in us and through us and in our lives. So as we hear your words, as we interact with one another, God, may we have an experience with your spirit, God. May you lead and guide us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you guys very much for sharing and the worship team. Uh, we, it's really encouraging to me to be reminded of God's faithfulness when life does often feel just confusing. Uh, so thank you very much. Um, just a couple quick announcements as we continue in our time of worship. Our middle schoolers and high schoolers are starting to meet up again tomorrow um, after taking a couple weeks off with school getting started. Um, we're just excited for the coming year and thankful for our students and ask that you guys would continue praying for each of our students as they go through this year as with all the changes of everything. So um, just I know my prayer for our students this year is that we would all grow in depth of relationship with each other, that our group would be really unified and um, a source of encouragement and hope for our students and also that our students would grow deeper in relationship with God. Um, that those would be thriving relationships where they can ask the hard questions and um, find God there. Um, so we're just really thankful. Um, we do have a need for another leader with our middle schoolers and high schoolers. So that's Monday evenings from 6.30 to 8. So if anyone is interested in hanging out with some amazing people, I'd love to talk to you. Um, the other quick announcement is uh, one of the things that we talk about a lot here at New Day is how important authentic relationships are. That we as a community really value going beyond the surface level and diving into deeper relationships with each other. So next week in the Blessed series, one thing that we're going to be talking about is that a way to do that is to share meals with each other. So starting in October, on the first Wednesday of the month, we'll be having a potluck together as the New Day community. Um, it's just going to be a super simple, casual way for us to get together, but to have some of those deeper conversations that go beyond the surface level and to have conversations about life and our relationship with God. Where are those places that we're wrestling with who God is and how can we support each other in the midst of that? So um, everyone is welcome. We'll be sending out a sign up for that this week um, and do just ask that everyone um, will be that you sign up in advance. So Eric and Emily Dirks are going to host the first potluck. Um, so and that'll be on Wednesday, October sixth. Um, and along with that, if all that sign up information is in the weekly email, so I know there's some people here that might not get the weekly email. So if you'd like to do that, talk to me, um, and I will make sure to get you on that list. So before we head out, kids, let's pray really quick. Father God, we want to know you. We just praise you that you are faithful and strong and steady, that your promises are secure and can't be shaken. We ask that you would guide our thoughts and our conversations this morning and throughout this coming week. We think of the New Day retreat happening later this week. We think of our students starting to meet again think of each of the conversations we'll have in all the different places that we're in. Give us ears to hear, God, and hearts that desire to truly listen to you and to listen to those around us. Show us those places, like Cindy talked about, where we get to just see you and say again, again, 
We love you, God, and we worship you. Amen. Um, kids can come with me. Thanks, Linda. Have a good time, kids. Don't you sometimes just want to go down there? I just want to go down and, 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 and just be involved in that. I remember as a kid that we did that quite a bit. We, we just go, hey, we're going to go. And I was just so looking forward when we got down to different places. And it was this place where you get to come and it's like, wow. But we never had doubts, at least I grew up in that, that, that people who were with us really cared about us and that they were listening to us. Uh, I don't know about you, but um, can I ask you this question? And that is just, Who's been a blessing to you this week? Just kind of bring that to your center of your mind. Who has been a blessing to you this week? Think about that for a moment. Who inspired you maybe, maybe encouraged you, valued you, helped you in some way. But basically we're a blessing to you. Um, I received a text this week from a person who simply said, thank you for our conversation. It helped me to talk it through. Thank you. I appreciated that. I was blessed by that. It was one of those conversations that you're just thankful that God orchestrates. It's a, it's a thing of beauty where you get to have conversations with different people. I get to have those fairly often because I'm, I'm looking for those, right? I'm kind of saying, Lord, who is it that, that I can listen well to? It's a skill that I've worked hard in developing. I can't say that I have um, always been good at it, and I can't say that I'm great at it today, but I work at it all the time. Listening is one of the hardest things to do. If I had the video up this morning, I would show you the little boy, little Mateo wanting cupcakes. Listen, Linda, listen, listen. He just goes over and over. If you've seen that one, it's kind of like he's trying to get her to listen, but he can't listen to save his soul. Poor little kid. Right? So what makes it so hard to listen with care? And I'm going to go through this fairly quickly because it's some of the stuff you already know. But I just want to make sure you understand why you're going, man, why is it so hard for me? to tune in, to listen well. Well, first of all, your mind is already pretty full of non-useful information that consumes way too much of your time and energy. Sorry, folks, we're inundated with information all the time. Um, Scott and Davenport realized that our minds are cluttered with way too much information that actually hinders our ability to think clearly. In the book, Declutter Your Mind, which I read a few years ago, they noted that that we can control and direct our thoughts, but it often feels like our thoughts and have minds of their own, controlling us and how we feel. Thinking is necessary for solving problems, analyzing, making decisions, and planning, but in between the times of proactive and mental endeavors, the mind roams like a wild monkey, dragging you through the brambles of rumination and negativity. Your constant inner dialogue distracts you from what is happening around you right here right now. It causes you to miss valuable experiences and sabotages the joy of the present moment. They also noted that we often feel like we don't have time to declutter because we're too busy consuming new information and stuff that's coming in. But at some point, all this busyness is leading us to mental and emotional exhaustion. It's just like, I just can't do it. How many of you often feel overwhelmed, tired, lacking focus? I mean, is that, is that kind of a pattern all of a sudden? Gets, yeah, I just, I'm, I'm out. I'm, I got to check out right now. I, I can't keep my mind. This is one of the reasons why. By the way, they say in the mindfulness and everything else you're reading, which I think they take right out of scripture because what's talked about all the time in there. And that is if you just take moments of silence, take about three minutes. When you're feeling overwhelmed, you just take moments of silence and say, all that I'm worried about, all I'm thinking about, all that I've got consuming me, I'm just gonna set over here for right now, and I'm gonna take three minutes, and I'm just gonna be silent, get all the noises out, and just, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm here, I'm present with you, I'm with, I just am gonna commune in this moment, and find a place where you can breathe deep, you can just get, okay, now I can come back and see what I need to pick up out of this pile that I let go of. They say that particular thing, just doing that, that three minutes can refocus you and help you more than you could ever realize. Secondly, um, we are almost never disconnected from the communication overload, whether it's a radio, whether it's a cell phone, crowds, computer, billboards, books, TV, classrooms, whatever it is. You are bombarded all the time 
with that. And we are unable to listen, it said, 75% of the time. I thought that's interesting. I was on this website, um, International Listening Association, and, and they're basically saying, yeah, people have learned how to selectively listen from a long time ago. Even as you're listening to me right now, your mind is trying to wander. If you're even focused in on me, your mind is working really hard on focusing on something else. It wants to, it can't help but not want to. It's like, yeah, I'm listening to John, but what about this? What about this? It's so difficult to keep our minds directed and to truly listen well. When do you disconnect from any form of communication? Especially your cell phone. Are you intentional about that? Do you say, no, this is now a time I'm gonna be fully present. Can you do that on a regular basis, even if your cell phone's with you? Do you have that sense? No, I'm completely present with whoever I am with. It's a key to listening well. That's that second one. It's just, we're just overwhelmed with that. Third, your mind is elsewhere. Or what you want from this, um, from a person or from a situation, you're, you're, you're just kind of overwhelmed by this. Your, your mind, like I said, is, is constantly elsewhere. It's never able to really be present. In fact, they, they call this, um, it's an interesting phenomenon, but they, they say non-presence. They say the majority of people have learned to be non-presence. It's kind of you're in your own little world, your little bubble. And even though you're with people, it's like, I'm non-present. And being non-present is something that um, is, is very helpful at times because it gives you its moment to be able to rethink and kind of uh, redirect your thoughts. But to be with people and to be non-present is, is of ep ep epidemic proportions. It means that most everyone has a very difficult time being really present with another person. Just be in there, just I'm here, I'm present with you, I'm not thinking about myself, I put anything away, I'm not thinking about how you think about me, I'm not thinking about what you're, you know, uh, about what I gotta do next, I'm just here with you and I'm tuned in, it's all about you. In fact, um, one particular guy uh, who had really struggled with this for a long time, he said, I, I suddenly realized that the only way I could truly listen is I had to keep repeating the phrase, it's all about you. Whoever the person is, it's all about you. It's, it's all about you. It's all about you. And whenever his mind gets tracked, no, nope, it's all about this person I'm with. It's just about them right now. And he said it really helped him a lot, except that he said, I have to keep doing it. He said, once I stop doing it, ah, I got lost. <laughs> That's his way to deal with it. And again, you might be thinking about how you're gonna to respond to the person, what you wanna change about what they're saying, um, whether you have good or bad feelings towards this person, um, your tasks, everything else just gets cluttered in. That makes it difficult. When your mind is elsewhere, you cannot be fully present. And by the way, any of you who are parents, you gotta know this, that having kids, it is so hard because they would like you to be present with every one of them fully all the time. And if they're kind of scrambling for you going, I can't be present with you all the time. I'm kind of bouncing from one to the next and it's very, very difficult. In fact, I remember one particular Saturday when I was working at home and uh, my daughter was trying to get my attention, which happened fairly often. This is just one particular um, um, time. And uh, Rachel was saying, dad, 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 dad. And, uh, and, and so um, I, I'm kind of hearing this in the background. You know how it is. I don't know if you're a parent, you're kind of like, I know there is sound coming from somewhere, um, but I'm, I got stuff I'm working on, and I've heard the sound, and I've learned how to dismiss it fairly easy. That's really sad. But, um, and finally, it, she yelled out, and almost in a screaming, Dad, can't you hear me? And I just kind of stopped and went, whoa, whoa, someone's like really wanting my attention badly. Um, this got me think out of my, you know, thinking analytical bubble, out of my little place I was at, and I was able to focus in, and in frustration, I basically said, well, yeah, what is it that you want? You know, I mean, you're, you're almost bothering me. And then she looked at me and she, what, what would she say? Like a lot of other kids say, never mind. Yeah, yeah. no, dad, you, you can't listen. You can't hear me. And I'm going, okay, I'm, I'm focused in now. What do you want? It's too late. Nothing. And I'm saying, no, no, I apologize. You know, you do all that. It's like, missed the moment, blew it, didn't take advantage of that. 
In that moment, it was indeed too late. Man, listening is a hard skill. We're not alone in this. Listening is one of the most difficult skills, if you truly want to do it, that it will take. And one of the things that uh, Abraham Maslow said back in the 1950s when he was doing all of this stuff in psychology, and if you've heard of Maslow's you know, hierarchy of needs and all the things that he did, but one of the things he said was the ability to be in the present moment is a major component of mental wellness. And he went on to just kind of talk about, and the majority of people I find in the 1950s, with all that we have going on, it's very difficult. He said, but, and that's why I see this emotional health crisis coming down the road. Oh, oh, if, there's not, if there's not a prophecy, right? I mean, his whole thing is said, we, we've lost the ability back then, way back then. If, if that's what's happened, it hasn't gotten better. To be present, mental health crisis that way. That's the third. Lastly, we struggle with listening with care because we get trapped into thinking we must take responsibility and ownership of what we're hearing. Some of you kind of go, ding, ding, that's me. I hear someone and it's like, oh no, I got to fix this. If you're a husband, that's kind of almost your mindset, right? I hear my wife talking, what is it we need to do to fix it and make it better? I mean, that's kind of what my attitude was for years and years. And a lot of times, like, no, just listen. I just want you to listen for understanding. Listen to process through with me. Listen to be present with me. And I think that's where a lot of times we miss out because we think, oh, I'm listening to this person, so what responsibility do I need to have? We often equate listening with the idea that I must do something now with this to make it better. But that's not what listening with care is all about. Listening with care means that you get invited in you're offering yourself to be invited in, not to solve a problem, because that often can be a huge hindrance to the person later on, but it's to actually just listen, understand, affirm, just, just to walk alongside. That's the majority of times what it means. Try to understand the person better, not try to fix them or the problems. All of these can cause us to become, because we're overwhelmed by it, desensitized. So let's just admit, we are all desensitized people. No matter how good you want to feel about yourself, man, we're in a culture that does not do well in listening because we're all these reasons. So this morning, um, we're going to put into practice some listening opportunity. Because instead of just me up here speaking about it, I want you to have a chance to actually practice some of these things. And I'd like to read this scenario from Jesus' life and see if we can discover some of the key ways he listens and responds. It's found in Luke 18 in just a few verses. If you got your Bible, you can turn it. Otherwise, it's in your insert. And you'll find it. And, uh, and I just want to read this. So I want us to prepare ourselves. Okay? This is the Word of God. So let me just say a word of prayer. Lord, we want to move into a listening stance. It's you speaking. It's your situation. It's what you did. You were walking along, and then this scene happened. Help us to hear, understand, listen. And know how this also will impact our lives. Pray in your name. Amen. Here's what it says. As Jesus approached Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard the crowd going by, he asked what was happening. They told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. So he called out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Now those who led the way rebuked him, told him, be quiet. But he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped, ordered the man to be brought to him. When he came near, Jesus asked him, What do you want me to do for you? Lord, I want to see, he replied. Jesus said to him, Receive your sight. Your faith has healed you. Immediately, his sight was received. And he followed Jesus. 
praising God. When all the people saw it, they all praised God. Simple little story. Here's Jesus on his way walking, doing some significant work. Amazing, right? So here's what I'd like you to do next few minutes. I'd like you to turn your chairs to some people around you. Um, we're going to engage in a discussion here, and it's going to be short, just a few minutes. Not everyone's going to be able to talk, so if you're a person that said, I hope I'm not going to have to talk, let, let someone else do the talking. But your job is to really listen, reflect on what they're saying, engage in the conversation around it. So, um, And here's what I've discovered. You need to develop a curiosity. If you're not curious, if you don't have wonder, if you don't have a sense of, I wonder what's going on, where you're able to try to understand where another person's coming from, you're going to miss all the opportunities that are out there. Seriously. Um, but there's something that needs to kind of click your interest. What, what about this? And so um, here's what we're going to do. Um, and that is I got, a, I got just a couple small group questions. Um, how does Jesus show that he listens, that he wants to respond, and that he values this man? So you're going to turn and you're going to ask that question. And can you picture a time when you cried out to Jesus and felt that he listened? How did you feel um, being heard in that way and valued? Um, was there a person that maybe directed you? Um, there's not going to be a lot of time for this, so why don't you go ahead and just turn. Um, this is going to be a short exercise, so just find the people around you. doesn't matter. Just pick a few. No more than six, though. Um, so you can only have between, between uh, three and six people. That's it. So, yeah. Or if it's really hard, you can have two people. It has to be at least two people, though. <laughs> and someone in the group, you can start it off by asking the question, how does Jesus show that he listens? And he wants to respond, and he values this man.
If you haven't moved to that next question, make sure you move to that second question. Ask each other. Picture time when you cried out to Jesus, felt that he listened. Is there a person who reflected Jesus' care to you? Give me a few more minutes on that. Okay, if you want to just take a moment to pray for one another, just have someone in the group pray over um, the group, and then I'll give you uh, just uh, one minute to do that, and then we're going to move to our next. Who wants to pray over it?
All right. All right, folks, if you want to focus in, we're going to just do one other quick thing here, and then uh, we're going to close out with some singing. And uh, mm -hmm. thank you for being willing to engage in some conversations. You can certainly finish that afterwards in a time of fellowship. Uh, we'll be downstairs, and we'll have a chance to to do that. You know, being present is really hard. In fact, I was just talking to Hosea over at the PowerPoint, and he said this is a constant example of having to be fully present because when I'm not, everyone gets in trouble. Um, so it's kind of like, good example. Way to go, Hosea. You're right. You can't be just mine up. Well, oh, wait, I got to push the next slide. So I thought that was really uh, well put, my friend. Good job. Well, I thought we'd do just one little quick thing. I've got uh, one little scenario I want to go over with you, and that is how do you get into this mindset of listening? And this is just all application, right? We want to be able to do that. The first is I'm hoping that you always develop a sense of curiosity and wonder and excitement. And here's the key point. Ask questions. If you don't know what questions to ask, I've got tons of questions. In fact, I've got all kinds of books up for for couples in a workplace. I mean, I've got tons, of, and it basically just goes through question after question you can ask. You can go on the internet and they actually have some great insights. But the key is to ask questions of something that you're really interested in and that they're interested in, finding that connection piece. So here's a strategy that you can use to listen to others well. Um, number one is to repeat and restate what that person has shared um, until they let you know that they feel heard. You know, I feel that you heard me, you know, and you basically just say, hey, what I heard is, and, and, and it may feel clunky to start with, that's okay, maybe difficult, um, but just try it. Is that correct? Did I, did I hear you right? Did I understand that? And the second one is experience, just kind of using this read acronym, um, name the emotion the other for experience in the story they shared. I sense that you felt bad about that or felt good about that or, or felt something about that. Um, this must have felt this way. Is that true? Um, is it grateful, awful, whatever it might be? Just put it in that sense. Can you do that? And then can you affirm the next one? Every true thing about their about what they're coming, which means that you heard them and you said, well, there's some real um, authenticity and truth to what they're saying. It looks like you really learned a lot or maybe you were put in a difficult situation or maybe you stepped up the challenge or you struggled with this. Um, or you're still wrestling with that, you've come to a place of peace about it, and basically you're affirming it looks like this is where you're at in the journey. And then last is disclose and discuss. Only now do you disclose your view. If you feel like, wow, I'd like them to really explore some other options, it looks like they're trapped in their thinking, and I think this might be an opportunity. You may not have to do this one, um, but there's times where you just want to get, whether it's more clarity, or you're thinking, you know, can I share with you something that as you were talking, I was wondering, um, maybe you had another way to, that you wanted to say, hey, have you ever thought about approaching it this way? Or have you ever thought about this? Which helps the person to grow. Um, would you be interested in telling me more about how this worked for you? Because I'm, I'm not really quite picturing it. And so that's just a short little um, way to do that. And so I thought I would just put that into practice real quick. And uh, as, we, as we get ready to um, close up. And so I'll ask Bethany to come up. And uh, by the way, we haven't rehearsed this. So she doesn't know what I'm going to ask her. So, but she's the kind of person that I know I can put on the spot. And I did tell her we're going to do this. So I'm going to put her on the spot. And so, Bethany. No, I don't know anything. <laughs> so, Bethany, one of the things that uh, kind of I was thinking about when you had shown us all the strengths of our congregation is I wondered what really, at what point did you like really connect with that strength? I mean, what kind of, was there any kind of experience or how did you say strengths is so important to me? I want to spend my energy and time on that. Mm -hmm. What 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 kind of prompted that? Can you stay at any time? So believe it or not, it was uh, like almost 20 years ago, 21 years ago, I was at Bethel University up in the Twin Cities and uh, we were a university that was piloting research for the Strengths Finder. So we were, we were trying to determine if that tool was valuable for 18 to 22 year olds, if the science was gonna be fine for younger brains. Um, and so I got, kind of got in on the cutting edge of the movement. And I remember it was like one of the first times in my life where someone said to me like, oh, so these are the things that are unique about you. And what the research is telling us is if you do more of that, you'll be better. 
And it just, like, made sense to me. I don't know. Like, God just kind of met me in that space. Maybe it was some of the things I learned as a kid, like, just about the body and many parts and spiritual gifts. I'd grown up in the church, you know, so, like, a lot of that made a ton of sense to me. So it was, like, now there's this, this, like, scientific tool that says, like, if I do more of this, then I'll be even better. And so something just clicked for me. Um, I think... Like, why wouldn't I want to do the thing that God's already put in me? So I think it resonated for me on, like, a very spiritual level, even in my, like, 20-year-old brain, you know? And so I really organically started doing it. It wasn't until probably maybe about 10 years ago that I really started to do it really intentionally from a professional way. Yeah. So it sounds like at that pivotal moment when you were in college, all of a sudden this kind of came to your mind and you grabbed a hold of it. Yeah, it was like the right tool for what I was going through. Yeah, yeah. Awesome, awesome. So as you've grown through this, I mean, is there a sense that you're saying, wow, I I now include this in almost everything I'm doing? I mean, how did you decide that this is going to be now kind of part of the fabric of your thinking? Yeah, I mean, I just, in your life, I think when you find something that you love, you know, like, I even think about you, John, like, as soon as you, like, read something and you know it will be helpful for our community, you, like, want to share it with us. And I kind of feel like that, too, about my work. Like, why would I not want everyone else to experience, like, transformation or a different way of them looking at themselves? So it's almost like you can't not share it when it's not only a passion of yours, but, like, when God puts something in you. So, Is there any one specific time where you just remember this person I saw a dramatic change? Oh, gosh. I mean, I mean only from Adam Moore, but... Yeah, like, I experienced a lot. Honestly, Jed is the transformation. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Jed was the biggest thorn in my side for the longest time about my work. Um, you know, he used to say, like, Bethany, you're trying to, you know, box people in, or you're trying to generalize people. And I just said, no, this is, like, our greatest platform. This is our greatest opportunity, you know? And I think he had to see it in action. Um, but I think that's been a blessing to me probably because it always makes me rethink what I'm doing and like put it through a lens of someone that might be really skeptical about how I do my work. So honestly, I've seen a lot of transformation in Jed and his mindset, but I've also seen a lot of transformation in our marriage. Um, because when you think about the other person and what they bring differently, like that's been really, really transformational in our, our lives. It changes how we look at our kids. Um, Looking at them from an asset-based way versus a deficit-based way is really transformational. So Super. Yeah. Super. Well, thank you for taking a moment to share that with me. It sounds like this is something you're really excited about and want to continue yeah. to do yeah. and uh, go for it. So I'd love that. Thank you for asking me. Yeah. Well, I'd like to talk more about that in the yeah. future. All right? Yeah. Thanks. So, um, Sounds good. Is he a good listener? Good. So, so here's the thing is that I, I want you to just... It's not so much about, oh, I wonder if I'm going to get it right. Even if you need to say, hey, you could practice someone. Listen, I want to be a better listener. Can I ask you a couple questions? And I might even read through this. Okay. Um, and, and you could even do that. You might find some other resources that work for you. Um, but the key is, is that you attempt to really listen well. That's really the goal I had for you today is because there are so many people who want to engage in deeper conversations. They really do. But there's so few who are willing to do that. And you can have a very quick conversation just as I went over and talked to Hosea. And we're talking about, well, what do you think about this stuff? And, and, and he just really says, well, right now, this is a listening experience trying to do PowerPoint, right? Oh, well, good example. You can use that, he said. I will use it. Right? I mean, you, you, can, you can have all of these different ways in which we can begin to process. And so... So as we close up, uh, I want us to just really, in our prayerful sense, um, as the worship team leads us in this last song, to really be um, praying, Lord, we, we need you to give us the wisdom that you want to give us. And so let me pray over you, and we will close our time. Lord Jesus, you have said that if we come to you, you listen to us. When we come with an open heart, when we come with a real passion to seek you, you said we'll find you. When we seek you with all of our heart and Lord and in the relationships we have around us, you just can do something extraordinary when we are just putting ourselves aside. Just Lord, help me to get out of my way. And then I can really focus in on others. I want to hear about them. I want to know about them. I want to understand them. I want to have conversations. And the thing, Lord, I know you've orchestrated so many conversations with people that 
even when I prayed beforehand, whatever you want to do with this conversation, all of a sudden, somehow, in the midst of that, I find an opportunity somewhere within there and say, wow, I, I want to affirm that person. I want that person to know they're valued by you, God. And there's something that changes when they know they're valued by the creator and the author of the whole universe. It's a remarkable thing. So we ask that you help us just to be this light in the world that needs. Um, be with each person here. May they uh, understand that you're orchestrating in their lives a deep connection with you and with one another. We pray in your name. Amen. Please drop that off in the basket back there. We'll be praying this week as a staff. Um, if you haven't filled that out, that's okay. Over the next few weeks, we'll still be doing that to pray for anyone that God lays on your heart. 
um, that journey alongside. So go in God's strength and his grace as his face is placed upon you. In your name, amen.